Right, how's it guys? Dominic Young from Young's Performance Craft, aka Bro RC Surfer. Today I'm going to do a little video on how to change the bearings in your water-cooled brushes motor. These motors uh, endure a lot of stress operating in salt water and no matter how hard we try, uh, it's inevitable that some salt water is going to get into your bearings over a period of time and your bearings are going to get a bit noisy, perhaps create uh, more drag than is desired. So, uh, at the cost of a couple of dollars, or maybe, uh, I don't know, one or two dollars a bearing, uh, you can change out your bearings. I upgrade the bearings when I change them out to uh, stainless steel bearings. And um, yeah, you can continue to enjoy your motor uh, for much longer than most people do. I mean, some guys hear a bit of noise in their motor and they think the motor's ground out and they'd rather go buy a new motor than uh, just change out the bearings. So let me show you how simple it is. And hopefully that will encourage you to uh, rather service your motor than buy a new one. Right, so we start off at the back of the motor here. We have a couple of little screws. I like to work over a container. So if we drop anything, it falls into the container. Safety is uh, prevention is better than cure. Make sure you have the right little star screwdriver to fit into these little star screws. You don't want to strip them out. Loosen up your three screws. Holding your back cap on. Drop them into the container. There we go. Got that loose. Now to get the back cap out, I leave the uh, coupling on, whether it's a straight aluminium coupling or your uh, quick set coupling. Yeah, just leave it on the shaft to give this a lot shaft some support. Find a nice hard surface like the back of this uh, vice. Hold the uh, motor nice and vertical. Just uh, give it a good little tap and you'll see the back plate pops out like that. You just got to work it loose because sometimes it actually sticks under the shaft. There we go, we got it loose. Keep your motor nice and vertical. Loosen it up. Now you got to watch there because on the back of the shaft we have some spaces. Take those spaces off very carefully. Put them somewhere safe so you remember which ones they were and where they went. That's for the back shaft. There we have that. Just see if we can sort these wires out so we can get the back plate out the way. There we go. So there's our bearing. You can see the you can see the rust. Well not rust, it's more like dirt on the bearing. It's not actually as rusted, but to clean it up. It's more like just dirty. So there's our back bearing. There's our rotor and drive shaft. So it's gonna loosen up our coupler now. Take that off. Okay. Now it's a bit of a challenge to get your rotor out because you've actually got the magnets around the inside retaining it. So turn the motor vertical, push down with your thumb, grab this with your two fingers and you have to pull really hard. Also remember that there's spaces on the opposite side of this rotor. So you want to pull. You can see how tough it is. Pull really hard. And out it comes, and there we can see our spaces. Make sure that inside you don't have any spaces hanging around. Lock it out inside your container. Here are our spaces over here. Let's take them off. You can see the amount of so that's our rotor, simple device Just clean it up put it one side right and there we have our motor with our bearing inside down the bottom there we're going to start off by knocking the back plate bearing out put it on a vice little brass tube basic little brass tube just make sure it's thin enough to go through the hole and just thick enough to catch the bearing place it on a vice like this a couple little taps pops out quite easily there we have our old bearing. Put that aside. Then we have our motor. The bearing down in the head of the motor. And turn that around. And brass tube. Pop that out. It's popped out. And there we go. So there we have our motor housing. Where the bearings popped out. 
take a little bit of uh, paraffin and a nylon brush give everything a good clean on the inside Okay, at times like this, a bit of compressed air can be your best friend. Blow this all out. sure that the housings that hold the bearings are nice and clean everything's nice and clean all right so what I like to do before I prep the uh, bearing in there is just put a little bit of grease on the bearing just to just give it like an extra bit of seal while it's in the motor this is red rubber grease I'm using. You can use any real, any general purpose grease. I'm going to put the back bearing in first. I'm going to put this flat, put the bearing on the housing. Try and position it in. There we go. You can just use a little wooden dowel just to make sure that it's bottomed out properly. A little light tap. And our back bearing is comfortably in. I'm going to add a little bit more grease there. Nothing wrong with that. That's nice. Now we're going to drop the other bearing down to the front. Before we do that, we can also grease it up either side. These are say, as I said, these are upgraded stainless steel bearings. Not expensive, just endure better than the bearings that the motors come out with. So we drop this bearing down and just try with the back of the little screwdriver get it positioned in the housing nicely push it down and then I've got a little dowel that's been machined that fits snug inside the motor put this down just a few taps and there we have our bearing nicely seated in the bottom in the front and it's time to replace the rotor if I can find where I put it here we go so here we have it give it a nice wipe down I'm going to slide the front in first, so I'm going to put the front spacer back on. There we go, that's our front spacer on. And all we do is we simply hold this up. I'm going to hold on pretty tight onto this rotor because the magnets draw it up. Just hold it here, it'll go up and through the bearing there. That's in position. Turn our motor around. Put our back bearing on, or back, put our back spacer on, over there, there we go. Right, so we've got all our spacers on, we're going to just carefully work the back plate down the wires again, pulling it through. Okay, and what we've got to make sure when we pop this back plate in is that our screw holes are perfectly lined up otherwise you're going to struggle to get your little screws in and that can be a bit frustrating so we line that up nicely on the shaft a little bit to the right here yeah. Turning nicely, nice and free. Feels good. There we have it. <coughs> I 
Let's put all the screws in before you tighten them up. Cross that on. Okay. Just nip them up, don't over tighten them. Right, we have it. Put that coupler back on position. Okay. Smooth, 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 smooth. Everything sorted, it's time for a bit of a bench test. Plug our motor into our ESC. A bit of power on the ESC. And there we have a smooth motor for another couple of fun RC surfing hours in the surf cost maybe all of five dollars in a few moments of your time that's simple eh? hope that helped guys feel free to ask me any questions um, your motors might vary a little bit uh, if you're not using the leopard motor but really it's all much of a muchness eh? that's it from the bro